Hello and welcome to Adulting with Autism, the podcast based on the blog, based on the movie, based on the book. Based on the Broadway flop. Yep, it's a big turkey. No one wants to see it. I'm Nick. I'm Liz. And together, we're almost a competent adult. Yeah, we're getting there. We are. We've uh, been running the Adulting with Autism blog for um, a number of days. A, an amount of time. Yes. And it, it gained an amount of popularity over those amount of days. Yeah, it's a surprising amount, actually. Yeah, so we decided, like anybody who was on the internet in 2017, it was time to do a podcast. So we'll be taking questions from the blog and, you know, answering them as best we can, maybe having a bit of a discussion. Yeah. And anything that isn't addressed on the podcast will be addressed on the blog. Yes. You can say, no, I don't want to be part of this, part of this, just... Or, um... Yeah, just message and say, don't want this on the, on the podcast or anything. We will just answer it on the blog as normal. We still want to keep that, keep that running, but... This seems like an interesting interesting format to use to discuss um, the kind of stuff you've been sending in. Mm. So, the first um, question that we've got, um, or more of a request really, um, is from Tumblr user Wiener Dog Lattes, which is an excellent URL by the way. Clap, 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 um, Who wants us to talk about discussing a new diagnosis as an adult and sort of how to bring that up and talk about it with people really. Oh, I don't know. I mean, do we like do we have any relevant expertise on on recent adult diagnosis? I don't know. It was over a month ago. Yeah, a whole month ago. That's an ancient diagnosis you've got there. <laughs> um so certainly from my own experience, I started out talking to, you know, people who already knew about autism. So I didn't really have to explain too much. Um then it was time to tell my mum, which, you know, I say that like it was a horrible experience, but it wasn't too bad. Um, but my main advice would be to limit it to the basics, because there's not a lot of awareness of autism beyond, oh, I'm quiet and I like maths. That's, um, yeah. Neither of which is the case for me at oh. all. Oh, you, you hate numbers. You declared a vendetta against them. I have. A vendetta, not one vendetta, because that would be counting. Yeah, that, that's just wrong, ways. So, yeah, that would definitely be my main advice. But also, I mean, as you said in your ask, actually, sort of talking about how it might be more obvious as you get older, because there's more stress, more sort of general sensory input as well. Talk about how that means that it could be very easily overlooked, and I don't know your gender, Wiener Dog Lattes, but certainly it's a lot, it's very likely, no, common would be the word, it's, um, it's very common for sort of uh, women to be underdiagnosed or only diagnosed as adults, um, which I don't know if it applies to you generally, but it's, you know, a it's useful... It's definitely a thing. Yeah, for anyone who has a similar sort of query, that might also be worth mentioning. Definitely, please. Do you have anything to add? I mean, you're, you know, you were diagnosed as an adult, so I think you've definitely got the more relevant uh, viewpoint on this score. But I, I just want to back up everything, everything you've said there. It's good to kind of stick to the basics, really, um, when it comes to informing people. Yeah, and if they do want more information, you can always point them at things like the Autism Self Advocacy Network, which is yep. was a really useful resource. Um, that and the National Autistic Society yeah, that's... were really useful resources for kind of explaining the whole concept to my family. Yeah, those those are very um, very well done um, sets of, of resources and things like that. That. Definitely things I'd recommend. Yeah, I mean, at. they're not perfect, but no, but they're pretty good. They're, they're a good starting point when you d if you don't want to have to explain the basics. Yeah. One thing that's good to impart is that yes, here's the basic textbook um, idea of it, but there's a lot of. It's always good to tell people there's a lot of variation. 
you yeah. know everybody's uh, quite different even if they have uh, similar problems they'll manifest in in quite different ways I find well yeah I mean even if you just look at sen uh, sensory issues I yeah. mean the two of us have very different issues with certain food textures yeah that's definitely true well like you won't eat crisps but yeah. I love crisps mm. But I hate the feel of cooked apple, the texture and the taste and just everything about it. Whereas you'll just like, inhale apple pies. I love apple pies. They're the they're my favourite kind of pie. So yep, yeah, that's basically apple pies are good, crisps are bad, and you should take it one step at a time. That's my advice to you. Yeah, that seems a good summary. Well, yeah. Good luck, Wiener Dog Lattes. You're gonna need it. Take Don't my advice. say that! Have you taken my advice? Liz, Liz gave us some good points. <laughs> should we do another question? I think we should. Do read this one? Okay. Is it normal slash common for autistics to get chills easily? I find when I'm watching movies, listening to music, what have you, I often get chills if something even remotely sparks emotion in me. It's like the emotion are symbol becomes too much TM and I'm suddenly teary as a, as a result. Thoughts? Okay, so autistics are generally thought of as having low empathy mm -hmm. but you can also have a thing that is certainly I've seen referred to in the online community as hyper empathy which definitely sounds like what you're describing, sort of picking up on the emotion of the situation to the point where you just can't control your own emotional reaction. I mean, you get that a lot, don't you, then? I do get it a lot. I mean, I will cry at almost anything. Just ridiculous amount of, of things. Just emotions are happening, I am... I'm all... I'm just there, I'm... moved. Moved? Yes, I am moved <laughs> by the emotions. It's so emotional that you become early modern. Indeed. Indeed so I do that thing in which I am early modern, in my patterns of speech. Forsooth. Forsooth indeed. But yeah, I, I often often experience that. But you, you don't so much, you don't tend to get emotional over... I, I do not do the empathy thing. No. <laughs> I mean, I can identify people's emotions and, you know, Intellectually, I can understand the cause of them, but I, d I do not empathize. Yeah, you're, you're a caring person. You, you are very kind and thoughtful when anybody's in distress or anything like that. But, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I've cried at exactly one book in my life, except it wasn't so much the feelings of the character as the flashbacks that I got. I've, I've cried at approximately every book. And film. Yeah, uh, in fact, um, yeah, you, you kept a list one week of all the things I got emotional over, because <laughs> I just have too many feelings. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it's not strictly related to hyper-empathy, but when you get someone who gets overly emotional at the concept of the number five... The thing is, though, it's really good. It just fits in everywhere, it's always got a home. You know? <laughs> But yeah, like, long story short, I get where you're coming from. Um, obviously not everybody um, gets that, but I got that in spades. I, I tend to... I find it's actually quite useful in some ways, because um, having depression and stuff like that means I can feel quite emotionally bunged up. Or every so often, just like, oh no, there's like everything's happening so much, I need to get everything out. It's kind of, I feel like it's good to use it, use that sort of hyper empathy as a as a sort of release from other stuff. Just going right, I can, I know that if I listen to this song, I'm gonna, I'm gonna cry. I know if I'm gonna watch this series finale, I'm gonna cry. Because that means there's a shortcut to feeling something, which is always nice. It's the emotional equivalent of having a large curry when bloated. Yeah, gets all out you. Good. Yeah, yeah, we went there. So in summary, Anonymous, that is indeed an autism thing. Oh yeah. <laughs> I don't 
didn't think we'd go to poop so quickly. Yeah, it wasn't even me. <laughs> I'm not, I'm usually, dear listener, I'm usually the one who goes straight for the poop, but no. Oh, in this instance, it was not me. I'm innocent. I wouldn't go that far. Right. <clears throat> okay, next up we have Animated Calico who asks, how can I determine what's a special interest and what's just a major fandom I'm in? When I'm in a fandom, I tend to go all in and become obsessed with it. Is there really a defining trait of how I interact with the interest that sets it apart, or do I have a large multitude of special interests? This is a really difficult question. It is. It's a, it's a thinker, is that? Mm. Oh boy. Um... Because, I mean, a lot of parts of special interest are big parts of fandom culture. They're yeah. squeeing about things, info dumping, you know, obsessions which may be, you know, either short-lived or last for ages. Mm. So I can't, I can't really think of a way to draw that distinction. No, it's, it's very hard. I, th- I think, though, I, I find that I don't know, there's different, there's very much different kinds of, of fandom that I've seen, um, and different, different ways of, <coughs> um, of engaging, because I, I see people looking at, um, different aspects, like you could know all about the, um, ins and outs of, uh, I don't know, a Stormtrooper's Blaster in Star Wars or something like that, that feels to me more in the area of of special interests, uh, see what I mean? Because sometimes you'll you borrow into the real technical uh, details of it. But then you do get neurotypicals who do that. That's true. That's true. It's a thorny, thorny area. I mean, I'm. I really think it's not really possible to make a, a definite. This is fandom. This is special interest statement. Mm. But I mean. The thing to bear in mind is, you know, it is possible to have multiple special interests, and oh, they definitely. can be short-lived or, you know, last a lifetime. Yeah. But, I mean, honestly, my main piece of advice would be try not to think about it, just enjoy your passion. It's so rare to find something that you can be really passionate about, just don't overthink it. Yeah. In, in fact... Like a lot of the time, don't overthink it. It's just solid advice. <laughs> just unless you're doing quantum physics, in that case, you may want to overthink it. That might be a strategy. no. But overthinking is by definition thinking too much. It's right. just that the boundary for overthinking is a lot higher. That is very true. I'd really hate to see what somebody overthinking quantum physics looks like. That would be terrifying. The, their mind just literally explodes. Is it? It's, it's, it's horrific. Is it like one of those um, memes with the iterations of the brain Those are exploding? actually photographs of someone overthinking quantum physics. Oh boy. Mm. The poor family. Okay, so yeah. Um, it's good to have passions. Um, and yeah, you, it could be multiple special interests. Um, I, I guess the problem is when it comes to being um, neurodivergent, it can sometimes be impossible to tell um, what aspects of your personality or interests are from um, from the way your brain is, or from nurture or nature, anything like that. But so as someone with three mental illnesses on top of autism, that is a terrifying rabbit hole that I would recommend everyone stay away from. Yeah. If you... And the thing is, people just cannot necessarily work out the, the root cause of these of these things, even if you, even if you don't have mental illnesses or, um, or a neurotypical I, d- I don't know anyone like that, <laughs> but um, yeah, they must exist. They, I see them on TV. They they probably exist, but those those are actors, so oh yeah, they're just pretending. Yeah, there's even even if you don't have any of that, it's just it is impossible to find a, a root cause. But either way, one is not more or less real than the other. If you see what I mean, 
it's no I don't want to use the V word because <laughs> we kind of hate the word valid a bit for <laughs> reasons which we'll probably go into later but yeah just because something is a, a special interest or um, a coping mechanism or something like that to me that's it's really no really no no different to it just being a a thing that you like or a thing that you do. Mm. Yeah. And I mean, if it's an interest with a lowercase i or an uppercase i, like I said, the important thing is to just enjoy yourself, yeah. enjoy your life, enjoy your interests. Liking things is nice. It's really nice. It's the nicest thing you can do. Apart from loving things. Yeah. Loving things is great. I highly recommend loving things. Loving things is superb. So that was that's a really interesting question. Thank you for sending that in. That's um, that's a really really thought provoking question, and we hope we answered that. If not, feel free to yell at us over the internet. Everybody does. That's a lie. Everybody's been very very pleasant in in all their messages, as far as I'm aware. Yeah, it's just it's a lovely community. We love yeah. all of you. Thank you all for being very, very polite and pleasant in your messages to us. Okay, we have one more question. Ooh. It's from Websins with a Z. Websins. Um, I think this is more of a me one. Okay. How do I go about seeing if I have autism? My cam said that to be screen I needed to be screened for it and then I turned 18, so I'm not sure what to do. Pretty sure I am, but my therapist was pretty sure too. But I'd like to an official diagnosis if that makes sense. Apologies if this has been asked before. Okay, first off, Websins. It is fine to ask things that have been asked before. Yeah. Especially if we keep on going as a blog and podcast for a while, we're probably going to get a lot of questions coming up and again and again, but it's not fair to ask people to just comb just through the archives. Hunting things down all the yeah. time. Yeah, we're going to really try to tag things uh, with the relevant tags, but you don't want to go through so much um, of a... Yeah, all the all the different posts. Just if there's a if there's a question, even if it's a frequently asked one, we're always happy to answer it. Mm. And you never know; we might think of something to say one time that we didn't think of another time. Yeah. But anyway, okay. Basically, the process that I went through was get a referral from GP, speak to. I I assume there are cams, but basically got referred to the local adult autism service, yeah. went and spoke to them, got a diagnosis. Um, I mean, the fact that you're already seeing a therapist who is also pretty sure you're autistic, I would honestly just broach it with them. Yeah, that's... that's... Either broach it with them or with the GP. I mean, I'm assuming that you're in the UK because I, I haven't seen cams anywhere else. Yeah. For anybody who doesn't, um, may not know, that I believe stands for Child and Adolescent Mental Health Service. Yeah, so the fact that your cam said you needed to be screened and your therapist thinks that you're autistic, it should be very easy for you to get a referral. Yeah, that's, that's a lot of stuff backing that up. Yeah, and yeah, a lot of places do have specifically adult focused um, autism services. Um, some of them even allow you to self-refer, but you'd have to check um, on the NAS, the National Autistic Society website, whether yours allows self-referral, because I know that um, our local one in Derry doesn't. Yeah. But yeah, just, just ask for a referral. That's all you need to do. Yes. And for anybody who's possibly um, nervous about asking for that and feeling like they might... Uh, they might face some gatekeepers of some kind, which is unfortunate but or possible. Um, one thing that uh, I recommend, and I think it's helped um, some people I know and it's helped, it's helped you, is just kind of looking at um, you know, building up a little bit of a, a bit of a list, um, mm. just kind of going, right, sensory stuff is, you know, I can't stand jams, for instance. I don't know. You can read reading my blog. No. <laughs> but just as an, as an example, like, 
oh I, I cannot I cannot abide jam. Um, it is sensory heck for me. Um, I often um, phase out of problems with at this point. I go nonverbal then. Yeah, just and if of... if you're not sure what exactly the list of autism symptoms is, again, Autism Self Advocacy Network, National Autistic Society, and you can also get um, sort of PDF DSM five things. Yes, yeah. you can get stuff like that. Also, um, it's okay if you're trying to. Um, if you're looking at diagnostic criteria and you feel you match um, a number of them, but not necessarily all of them, or not to the same extent. No one matches all of them. I mean, some of them are impossible yeah. to match both of. Yeah, there's. It's. I mean, it, what we're talking about is a descriptor for a wide range of of behaviours and traits. So, is. You could almost call it a spectrum. You almost could. Yeah. I hope that catches on. <laughs> See, yeah, it's a, it's a spectrum. It's um, everyone's going to be a little bit different. But I think that's what makes it quite an interesting community. Mm. Good luck with um, with getting the referral and the diagnosis. I'm I'm fairly confident you will. It sound it sounds like um, it sounds like you you three quarters of the way there, frankly. Yeah. Ab absolutely. So, uh, best of luck with that, and best of luck to anybody who's uh, seeking a diagnosis or referral. And best of luck with your internet sins. Yes, good luck with those. So is that the last question we have? Yeah, that's, what, that's all we've got. Okay. Hopefully that you've enjoyed listening to this podcast. Um, we would advertise some underwear or mattresses or something. That's what you do in podcasts, but we don't have any sponsors. Um, so enjoy your food and clothing and sleeping areas, whatever they may be. Yeah, I I personally eat, clothe and sleep. <laughs> How about you? I mean, sometimes I forget to eat, but I definitely do the other two. That's good. That's good. Two out of three ain't bad. So hopefully we'll speak to you again. Thanks for sending in the questions and sticking with us through the last eleven or so minutes of slightly informative rambling. It's been twice that. 22 whole minutes. I cannot do maths. Well, you have a vendetta against, <laughs> against numbers. That, that is true. A single vendetta. <laughs> so yeah, goodbye dear listeners. Uh, do send us Dear listeners? Yes. I am, I'm being nice. They are dear to me. Okay. They're my friends. Good. Okay. Yeah, good goodbye, um, listeners. Uh, do send us more questions and uh, feedback or suggestions for topics of discussion, and we'll hopefully uh, be up with a new episode soon. Mm -hmm.